Hi guys, Dane here, and today we're off to see the wizard. So I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. I've just remembered these editions don't have blurbs, so I need to go on Amazon and get a blurb. Dorothy thinks she is lost forever when a terrifying tornado crashes through Kansas and whisks her and her dog, Toto, far away to the magical land of Oz. To get home, Dorothy must follow the yellow brick road to Emerald City and find the wonderfully mysterious Wizard of Oz. Together with her companions, the Tin Woodman, the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion, whom she meets on the way, Dorothy embarks on a strange and enchanting adventure. So. The first thing to say is this was a buddy read, so I read this with Izzy, which is Punk Rock Girl PA on Booktube, Madeline Swan, Elizabeth from Dyslexic Muggle, Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly, Lou G, who doesn't have a Booktube, but one day, if we keep working on it, Jason from Weird Reads, and Anthony, Anthony Andrews. So, um... I'd read about half of this before, but I hadn't read the whole thing, I don't think. And I have kind of seen the movie. It's one of those where I think the story has entered popular consciousness so much that um, I kind of already knew it without knowing it, if that makes sense. Let me move in so I'm centered in the shot. There we go. So I'm going to go through and read some of my notes, and then I'm going to give it my overall rating at the end. So um, they've all got these beautiful illustrations in this edition as well, which probably helped for me, I think. I like that the Wicked Witch of the East gets crushed at the start and um, it says here she was so old explained the Witch of the North that she dried up quickly in the Sun that is old indeed that's almost as old as I am so when she meets the Scarecrow the Scarecrow says there is only one thing in the world I am afraid of what is that asked Dorothy the munchkin farmer who made you no answered the Scarecrow it's a lighted match well he is made entirely of hay so I suppose that's reasonable we have the bit as well where she offers the, uh, the scarecrow some food and he says, I am never hungry, he said, and it is a lucky thing I am not, for my mouth is only painted, and if I should cut a hole in it so I could eat, the straw I am stuffed with would come out, and that would spoil the shape of my head. Very relatable, I have that problem too. And as well, this thing, where is it they go to? They go into a cottage, and... Um, Dorothy goes inside and goes to sleep on this this bed of dried leaves and then the, the Toto the dog falls asleep and the scarecrow he doesn't sleep so he just stands in the corner just watching <laughs> we have the thing with the uh, tin woodman as well he's very accident prone well he gets cursed by the wicked witch of the east I believe and so uh, so yeah he's chopping and he accidentally cuts off his left leg then he cuts off his right leg then he cuts off both of his arms and then he cuts off his head and he ends up being entirely made out of tin. But what gets me is, how did he cut off that second arm? If he'd already cut off one of his arms, I guess actually by this point, he'd switch to a tin arm. Plus, surely you would chop with your dominant arm. You wouldn't switch arms. I, I don't know. When the uh, tin woodman says that he wants a heart, he says, I shall take the heart, for brains do not make one happy, and happiness is the best thing in the world. I mean, it's pretty deep for a children's book. We have here this moment as well. I appreciate I'm glowing. The sun is right outside. It's very bright today. Um, but we have this bit here, which I think is very illuminating of the Tin Woodman's character. And uh, this reminds me of uh, one of my friends as well. And also myself, you know, I, think, I know a lot of people who are like this with animals and insects, which makes me happy. So anyway, I'm going to just read this, uh, read this paragraph. During the rest of that day, there was no other adventure to mar the peace of their journey. Once, indeed, the tin woodman stepped upon a beetle that was crawling along the road and killed the poor little thing. This made the tin woodman very unhappy, for he was always careful not to hurt any living creature, and as he walked along he wept several tears of sorrow and regret. These tears ran slowly down his face and over the hinges of his jaw, and there they rusted. When Dorothy presently asked him a question, the tin woodman could not open his mouth, for his jaws were tightly rusted together. He became greatly frightened at this and made many motions to Dorothy to relieve him, but she could not understand. The lion was also puzzled to know what was wrong, but the scarecrow seized the oil can from Dorothy's basket and oiled the woodsman's jaws so that after a few minutes he could talk as well as before. Jesus, I can hardly read my book because it's so bright. And then uh, not long after that as well, um, the lion I think is talking about getting a deer and uh, we have, don't, please don't beg the tin woodman. I should certainly weep if you killed a poor deer, and then my jaws would rust again. I think we can confirm that the Tin Woodman is vegan. Okay, here we have chapter 8, The Deadly Poppy Field. 
and I tabbed this page out because I had a good idea of what was coming before it came. It immediately made me think of opium poppies, and that's basically what happens. I think it's a nod to opium, at least, at the very least, so let me read this paragraph out. They now came upon more and more of the big scarlet poppies, and fewer and fewer of the other flowers, and soon they found themselves in the midst of a great meadow of poppies. Now it is well known that when there are many of these flowers together, their odour is so powerful that anyone who breathes it falls asleep, and if the sleeper is not carried away from the scent of the flowers, he sleeps on and on forever. But Dorothy did not know this, nor could she get away from the bright red flowers that were everywhere about. So presently her eyes grew heavy and she felt she must sit down to rest and to sleep. It's interesting because opium is in a lot of children's classics for some reason. And yet you never get, like there was no heroin in Harry Potter. That was another one of my quotes that people are going to comment in the comments, isn't it? There was no heroin in Harry Potter, Dane Cobain, 2018. So they're talking about going to, to meet Oz, and um, they meet this man, and uh, then the Tin Woodman goes, and I want him to give me a heart. That will not trouble him, continued the man, for Oz has a large collection of hearts of all shapes and sizes. Would that not ring warning bells and make you think, maybe, maybe this guy's a bit crazy? We have this telling scene when they all go to sleep, which talk, kind of tells you a lot about each of their personalities. She left Dorothy alone and went back to the others. These she also led to rooms, and each one of them found himself lodged in a very pleasant part of the palace. Of course, this politeness was wasted on the scarecrow, for when he found himself alone in his room, he stood stupidly in one spot, just within the doorway, to wait till morning. It would not rest him to lie down, and he could not close his eyes. So he remained all night, staring at a little spider which was weaving its web in a corner of the room, just as if it were not one of the most wonderful rooms in the world. The Tin Woodman lay down on his bed from force of habit, for he remembered when he was made of flesh, but not being able to sleep, he passed the night moving his joints up and down to make sure they kept in good working order. The lion would have preferred a bed of dried leaves in the forest, and did not like being shut up in a room, but he had too much sense to let this worry him, so he sprang upon the bed and rolled himself up like a cat and purred himself asleep in a minute. Bit like Biggie. Also, how dark is it that they finally meet Oz? And bear in mind, Dorothy is a child, and what does he ask them to do? He says, kill the Wicked Witch of the West? He's literally used, he's just turned a child into a hit woman? Jesus, you don't, they just don't write children's classics like this anymore, and I think that's a shame. Children's classics, like, why does Harry Potter, actually, in Harry Potter, Dumbledore does ask Harry, a child, to kill Voldemort, Huh. So that is a theme, child murderers. My friend even has a book called Osric Fingerbone and the Boy Murderer. So there we go. Michael Israel Jarvis. Shout out to, to him. We have this, which I think is some great, some great characterization. The witch did not bleed where she was bitten, for she was so wicked that the blood in her had dried up many years before. Right. And then we have the bit where basically Dorothy destroys... The Wicked Witch of the West by throwing a bucket of water over her. My question is, how has this witch been allowed to continue her reign of terror when all you need to do is get her slightly damp? You could kill her with a water pistol. And we have this paragraph here, which I think is a, a fantastic little paragraph relating back to uh, the fake news era and all of that stuff. Let's put it like that. You could read this almost as an allegory. Okay, just to amuse myself and keep the good people busy, I ordered them to build this city and my palace, and they did it all willingly and well. Then I thought, as the country was so green and beautiful, I would call it the Emerald City, and to make the name fit better, I put green spectacles on all the people so that everything they saw was green. But isn't everything here green? asked Dorothy. No more than in any other city, replied Oz. But when you wear green spectacles, why of course everything you see looks green to you. The Emerald City was built a great many years ago, for I was a young man when the balloon brought me here, and I am a very old man now. But my people have worn green glasses on their eyes so long that most of them think it really is an Emerald City, and it certainly is a beautiful place, abounding in jewels and precious metals, and every good thing that is needed to make one happy. I have been good to the people, and they like me, but ever since this palace was built, I have shut myself up so that I would not see any of them. He's basically hoodwinked all of the people into believing something that isn't true. I also notice that when she goes home, she doesn't click her heels together and say there's no place like home. I believe she just says, 
I think she just says, take me back to Kansas. Take me home. She claps her, the heels of her shoes together three times and says, take me home to Aunt Em. But I, uh, I haven't seen the movie in years anyway, so I'm, I'm going to watch that again soon. But I do think I prefer the book. In my it's rating time, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. My only real criticism was that towards the end, the very ending of it felt a little bit rushed and all kind of crammed together. But I really enjoyed it. I think it's got this timeless classic as well that... Um, it feels almost as though it could have been written yesterday. Absolutely loved reading it, and uh, I would definitely recommend it. So, yeah. So there we have it. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read The Wizard of Oz, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.